Welcome back to the GTN show this week from the campus in Quinta del Lago, where we've been filming for the past few days. But unfortunately, it's time to leave. Oh, I know, I don't want to go home. But on the plus side, we have a packed and exciting show for you. We do indeed. Lucy Charles Barkley made a very impressive WTCS short course debut, mm -hmm. but also Johnny Brownlee has announced that this Olympics will be his final one. I know. Talking of Olympics, we've got athletes securing their slot for the Games in just over a month's time. Athletes stamping their spot for Kona. And the Iron Cowboy, you probably remember it. Well, he has reached 100 days, and that means 100 Ironman distances. <sighs> So impressive. But first of all, we've got a flight to catch up. We have made it home before Portugal went on to the Amber list. So we don't have to quarantine. We're free. But, We're free, Mark. Yeah, but I thought we were celebrating because this is the big one. This is the 200th show. Oh, yeah. Amazing. How could I forget that? Sorry about that. That is pretty cool to celebrate, isn't it? Yeah. Well, as we said, we've got a packed show. And it's probably time to come back to reality and take a look at what has been going on in the world of triathlon this week. And our first piece from Reacts is this picture of Amelia Watkinson racing at Ironman Cairns. And, well, I think in her own words, it's not the most flattering picture. She said, um, her coach basically said, I look good no matter what. And it's proof that maybe she can't always trust her coach. I think we've all been there. Um, yeah, I think we look great <laughs> out on the race course. And if someone snaps a photo of you, yeah. you just... Not so pretty. <laughs> uh, next one from Javier Gomez, um, racing at the WTCS uh, Leeds race and unfortunately got caught up in a crash. So athlete in front of him hit a cone, crashed, he tried to avoid. Doesn't look like he had a bad crash, but a little spill and he's got a bit of road rash. He says he's hopefully going to bounce back from that and be racing yeah, very soon. Yeah, fingers crossed. Well, he needs to be, doesn't he? The Olympics are not far away now. Mm. Um, some other kind of, I guess, mixed news as well from Nick Butter. You might remember us telling you about him. He was trying to run 100 marathons in 50 days so he was trying to do two marathons a day set off kind of well and his body wasn't able to sustain that kind of continuous impact picture here of him on crutches that was at day 29 so he had to take a massive sort of back off he had a, I think a couple of days of actually no running but he's back on track now he's just past the 50 mark so he's past halfway and it looks like he's going strong again oh that's awesome um, another one from Leeds WTCS and unfortunately I couldn't find the actual clip here but I've fortunately managed to find Katrina Matthews um, post on Instagram and uh, basically just a display of fantastic sportsmanship between the front, front three which we'll get on to explaining more about later but Maya Kingma essentially just mm -hmm. grabbing a water bottle for Jess Learmont and passing it on a totally different country person and just just yeah. really nice it's, it's lovely and I wonder if it's a little bit of mind games you know how it's kind of like I'm strong enough to pass no, you a yeah. drink you know, uh, yeah. just like I'm being I'm being kind here I don't I don't need any other little games but here's the water let's keep it fair I'm yeah. going to sprint you. But anyway, well, like we say, we'll tell you about the results later on. Well, this next one, another kind of really nice act from Jan, and it's his Fridino Fund. I like what he's done with it. Um, so he's basically got a, a fund he's set up to help some of the disadvantaged children in the Girona area. I think he has put some, some money in and some fundraising into a local cycling program. They've got a pump track there. And he just says that being brought up in South Africa, he realises the power of sport. I mean, I think we all realise the mm. power of sport. So, yeah, it's really great to see him doing something really positive in the area. Yeah, absolutely. And finally, we did last week mention about Damien Hall breaking the coast-to-coast -coast record here in the UK. Well, he actually posted up a really interesting um, caption, really, on Instagram, which we both discussed. The fact that he actually um, experienced hyponatremia during the re well during the attempt, uh, which is interesting because normally when we do endurance of and often think we might struggle from dehydration. Mm -hmm. Well, he actually said that he almost overhydrated, but because he started to feel bloated partway yeah. through the attempt, he stopped taking on electrolytes, planning to bring them back in, but in the end, he just almost ended up flooding the body yeah. in the system. And I just thought it was quite funny. He said he got to a point where he thought leaning was cool. <laughs> Uh, obviously, his mind just went a bit doolally. It even oh said to, God, that at a point scary, he, was, isn't it? he kept asking, what are we doing to the people helping and running with him? What, where are we going? What's going on? Oh and he's God. going after this coast-to-coast -coast record. And he's still attempt. got the record. It's scary stuff, Absolutely but Absolutely amazing. Impressive. And goes to show what the, the mind can do and how strong <laughs> yeah. it can be. But yeah. Exactly. Okay, now for the try news, and we have got some mega challenges and accomplishments for you today. We certainly have, and this first one is 
one of the largest. As we film this right now, James Lawrence, AKA the Iron Cowboy, will be coming to the end of his 100 Iron Distance triathlons in 100 days. In actual fact, by the time you're watching this, he probably will have finished and hopefully he'll be putting his feet up and resting and recovering. But we're super excited to say he's agreed to have a chat with us. Admittedly, not right now. I think we need to let him have a little bit of time, but keep your eyes peeled because that's going to be coming quite soon. Yeah, I'm sure he's uh, going to be enjoying a few beers right now Hope and so. just spending time with the family. But my goodness, the guy is an absolute machine. As we mentioned a few weeks ago, he was experiencing some issues. Notably, he was it, with his lower limbs actually, he had to have some custom shin plate guards made Ooh. of carbon to essentially absorb some of the impact when he's running rather than the shin bones himself. Despite all of that, he's gone on to do each of these iron distance triathlons, which he has coined the term iron cowboy triathlons, in under 15 hours for most of them, day in, day out. Okay, so was that absolutely quick? Absolutely yeah. amazing. Obviously, that's not taking into account the transitions, probably a little bit of logistics yeah, we'll there, sort of stuff. That. But, you know, in terms of the swim, bike, run portions, that's very impressive. So, yeah, we're really, really excited to have him in on the show potentially in the next couple of weeks. Yeah, fingers crossed. Well, talking of endurance feats, there's another impressive endurance challenge going on at the moment, 20 marathons in 10 days. So, yeah, you've worked that out. That's two marathons a day. Yeah, good maths there. Well, yeah, this is Ray Rathasip, who is a very accomplished ultra distance athlete, numerous world records, and has also done 20 marathons in 20 days. Um, so that was too easy, obviously. Yeah, obviously, but he did admittedly do all of those in under three hours. So ah. I assume he was planning to do the same for oh this. Now, on May the 25th, he started the attempt posting a 2.45 for his first marathon, then a 2.53 later that day, then 2.58 on the second day for both of them, and on the third day, the same again. Unfortunately, though, it did all start to fall off quite quickly, and by marathon number 10 on day five, he was coming in on 3.27. I don't know whether perhaps he's just gone off too hard, but sadly, it did all end there, because over the course of the five days, it seemed like he was really experiencing some issues, and a few people had reported, they'd noticed he'd been putting weight on, and he just put on like about five or seven kilos oh within a gosh. short space of time. So, so obviously, something was happening with his body, I'm not entirely sure what it was, um, but also so they had really bad weather and he was struggling oh. with just the cold and muscle damage and whatnot. So sadly, it just wasn't his day or his <laughs> days. 10 days. Uh, so I'm sure he yeah. will be coming back to that one. But also, I understand he's preparing for another challenge and this was just kind of a small one on the way to that. Small so, one, jeez. Yeah, I so mean, stay tuned. Yeah, I mean, that just, it's interesting again, isn't it? It's like the, the Damien Hall, not Damien Hall, sorry, Nick Butter trying to do double marathons and it's kind of like these athletes who've done these amazing endurance things but it seems that they're actually finding their limits which is kind of exciting and refreshing. Yeah it is because yeah I mean where is the limit with some of mm. these but um, also over the past few months we have been updating you on Adrian Bennett's mm. longest triathlon attempt and we did sort of mention a couple of weeks ago that he had completed it and it is actually finally officially being verified as a Guinness World Record. So he did a total distance of 7,519 kilometers. And um, he sort of did a reverse triathlon, so he went run, bike, swim. Um, but yeah, it's all been officially announced and confirmed. Yeah, awesome. So congratulations, yeah, Adrian. Well done. Now, Challenge North America have just announced that they will be no more, but it's actually quite positive news. So as a result of the really successful Challenge Miami and Challenge Daytona, which you might have seen some really great televised racing earlier in the year, well, they basically decided to set up their own brand. It's been headed by the CEO, Bill Christie, who comes from a NASCAR background. So, you know, all these races have been on racing circuits. And the idea is to basically develop this into more of these races in this format. So hopefully they're going to have four of them next year, adding another the three the year after. This is under the, the brand called Clash and hopefully with that we're going to see more media coverage you know like we did at the pre reflexes it's great to get that close up you know the moto drivers can get in really close to the cyclists and the runners and I think it's quite exciting for triathlon. Yeah absolutely. Now we've also got some Tokyo 2020 Olympic news and I feel like we just have updates week in week out at the Me moment. Too. Just developments constantly. Now with the Japanese capital essentially under a state of emergency till 20th of June June, a lot of volunteers have actually just pulled out from volunteering. They've actually gotten 
around 10,000 volunteers that pulled out, leaving just 70,000, which they say is still enough. Also, this has come about due to some remarks by their previous, I believe it was the previous, the former president of the organizing committee, some sexist remarks, which have left people just a little bit disgruntled. Yeah. I think there's also an element of the fact that there aren't any spectators going to be at the events, and there's just less of that international vibe and feel, and mm. I think that's why a lot of volunteers yeah. put themselves forward for it because of it all It really of that. is. I mean, so many of my friends volunteered at the London Olympics, and they just love Love speaking to everybody and anybody that was like part of the allure so mm. um but i think they've still got enough volunteers for it all to still run yeah. smoothly haven't they because obviously with less people being there well the more well i guess still covid related in a sense um ironman uk have announced that it is purely going to be for british athletes they're not allowing any international athletes to travel in which i guess makes sense at this time but you know it maybe takes out a few of the top athletes however they are keeping the prize purse of $100,000, which I think is going to excite quite a lot of the Brits, and we're going to see a pretty hot race. We really are. I was actually, to be honest, and I think a lot of people worry that the race might be cancelled altogether, mm. given kind of Bolton has been a little bit of a hotspot lately yeah. for COVID-19. But fingers crossed, it's going ahead. It sounds like it is, but maybe not the big pro field we were but originally expecting. But all the race for those yeah. athletes going. And finally, we've got a nice bit of news from World Triathlon here who have announced a support fund of $100,000 to help athletes that have struggled financially during this COVID-19 pandemic and during this time. So they've got a total of 23 athletes and para-athletes from 11 different countries and they're going to be supporting them with three thousand dollars each essentially to provide them support to get to some of these qualifying events for the olympics and paralympic games yeah and with the qualification period almost at an end they've still got thirty one thousand dollars left over and by the end of the month they're then going to sort of retrospectively share that amongst the athletes that sort of had to spend more on their travel maybe they've had to go further or they've gone to more events so yeah it's just really great to see that they're realizing you know, what the, the stress that this year has placed on some athletes who maybe don't have that support from their federation and giving them the best shot of making it to Tokyo. Right now for some tech news and to start off we've got a pretty radical design or development of an existing design and that is the sprocket. New Motion Labs have essentially half the number of teeth on a sprocket. Now that means that essentially the sprockets of your cassette or the chain ring will fit into every other link in the chain. Oh, so right. okay. in turn they say that reduces the friction that you might normally experience. Now they have said they're not going to be mass manufacturing and producing this themselves, but they are going to be licensing the idea and design to other companies should they want to take it on. And apparently we will see that design at the Tokyo 2020 Olympic Games. So it'll be very wow. exciting to see how it develops. Yeah, it I wonder is. who will be using it, which countries. Absolutely. Yeah. Interesting to see. Well, another cool piece of technology development comes in the form of a helmet. Now, just to retrace a moment, you've heard us talk obviously a lot about Magic 5 goggles and how you scan your face using a phone and the goggles are made to you know, bespoke for your face shape. Well, Hexa, H-E-X-R, are a company who are doing exactly the same for cycling helmets. Now, apparently, um, a scan from your own iPhone Phone can take 250,000 points off the shape of your head and then the helmet is ordered bespoke to you. So it's obviously still got the highest of safety standards. It's made from a honeycomb structure that's molded exactly to fit your head shape. So um, yeah, I mean, no one can borrow your helmet, but I think that's probably a pretty good thing. It's also, they've got um, using 100% recyclable bioplastic. So um, yeah, they think about the environment as well. And it, and it is quite cool. So that's a nice little development. That's very, very cool. Also with the easing of restrictions here in the UK, the company Small Beer, who specialise in low percentage beer, have launched an exclusive sustainably sourced cycling jersey to essentially celebrate getting outside, riding outside, and I guess enjoying a few beers with your friends. Yeah, it's awesome. 100% of the profits are going to the mental health charity Mind. Now, it's also made of 100% sustainable um, recycled fibres and it's treated with um, the highest level of environmentally friendly dyes. But there's a couple of other really cool things they're doing. They're taking um, your old jersey if you want to send it in and we'll give you points that you can then use to spend on new kit, which is nice. But this last one I think is quite a like, fun initiative they're doing on Strava and they're getting people to go and ride a shape on Strava that's as close to the shape of their little beer bottles they do as possible and then you've got to submit them and you get a chance to win some prizes. But all in all, it's just a very cool design jersey, isn't it? Yeah, it, it is. And I think they've taken inspiration apparently from the shape of the bottles, their own branding, and there was some, something else that's gone into the inspiration. All sorts going on with them. 
on to race news now. And this is, well, today a pretty exciting part of the show. I'm quite looking forward to going through it. We're going to start with WTCS Leeds. And last week, we spoke quite a lot about Lucy Charles making her debut over this distance. And she didn't disappoint. She led out the women's swim, I guess, as expected. However, she wasn't alone. She came out of the water with a fair group of girls. However, wasn't quite quick enough through that first transition, which meant three got away. So Jess Learmont, Maya Kingma and Sophie Coldwell got out on the bike and, well, they were a three who worked incredibly strong together. And that was kind of one race going on. They never got caught. They opened up that gap even more. However, Lucy managed to stay in this sort of chase pack of four, including Taylor Spivey and Flora Duffy. So Flora had, had a slightly less um, than strong swim that we'd normally expect from her. And she was working on the bike, but realised they weren't going to be able to close that. But you could see Lucy really surging out of every corner, couldn't you? Just trying to really stick with that group. And she managed to. I mean, the front three had their race. It was Maya Kingma who put in an incredible final 10k to take the win ahead of Jess Learmonth and of Sophie Coldwell in third. But then there was a bit of a battle for those lesser places. Flora Duffy had an incredible run, clocking, I think, 33.47 for that 10k. So showing she's back in great form. But Lucy managed to hold off Taylor Spivey and she finished fifth in her debut. Absolutely phen phenomenal. Well, starting with that first three, I think that's a fantastic performance mm. in itself. And I did really like Flora Duffy mentioning after the race just how impressed she was by those three and the tactics. That and aggressive racing. And, and it's how she likes to race. Yeah. So she sort of was tilting the hat a little She's bit. She's not alluded them. to what happened in her swim because we do not expect to see her so maybe keeping up with those. No, I mean, she, she did say after she said, yeah, I've got a little bit of work in some areas, mm. but yeah, she didn't really say what went no. on there. Um, but I think it's fair to say Lucy's fifth place performance, whilst it doesn't discredit the top three, it kind of has stolen the limelight a little yeah. bit, hasn't it? Because she has gone from long course racing to short course racing and race with some of the best short yeah. course athletes in the world, which is kind of the wrong way round. We it's normally mad, see short course athletes stepping up to long course at the end of their career. Yeah. And I, I mean, yes, she made a lot of mistakes. It was quite, in some ways, painful to watch her on the bike, losing time at the corner, yeah, surging to get back on. And and gosh, she must have had a hard, hard bike just trying to stay in touch there. Yeah. But it's quite exciting if you think yeah. about it, like if she can improve technically on the bike. Yeah, I really think those surges must have taken so much out of her legs. So I didn't think that she'd be able to like outrun the likes of T Taylor Spivey. It was just <laughs> incredible. And she just has no fear to go and try something new like that. And I think she's earned a lot of respect from those oh, ITU absolutely. girls. Absolutely. I mean, too. even the small bits that she won't be in tune with or, or prepared for is that in a course like Leeds, you have to basically jump on the bike and put your feet straight in the shoes. You can't put them on top because you're going straight into a climb. She couldn't do that. She's not oh used to doing God. that. She's not yeah. even used to doing a flying mount. So those top three girls, Ne nailed it through transition yeah. and feet straight in. Yeah. So there we go. Um, now for the men's race, equally as exciting. We had quite a close swim, and as you said, it was it was a relatively slow swim. So we had a lot of athletes all coming out in close contention. We had a small breakaway group early on, a chase group that all kind of came together, leading leaving it being quite a fast and furious foot race. And it was Alex Yee mm -hmm. that just ran away with oh, it, and impressively so. What a performance. Yeah, yeah he left Morgan Pearson in his wake, and then it was Martin Van Riel taking in the third spot, but beating the likes of Christian Blumenfeld and Johnny mm. Brownlee. So, so, so impressive. Yeah. Um, and it, I mean... Well, it's opened up, I mean, we've been talking about this all along, haven't we, of the Olympic selection. So you can feel that pressure cooker building. I mean, the women's, for the GB side, that was all done, so that was less of a, a sort of pressure situation. But the, this was kind of the last chance for Alex Yee to kind of show his colours and for Alistair Brownlee, wasn't mm. it? It was kind of the two were fighting for one of those two slots with Johnny already having one secured. Yeah, I mean, that is... Um, I, I mean, I, I almost sense this is like a changing of the guard yeah. in a way. Not to, again, discredit Johnny or Alistair, but I, it's such an impressive performance by Al Alex Yee and it's almost like he's found that confidence to mm -hmm. kind of step forward and, and take that position. I mean, if he doesn't get that slot after that performance, then I think, well, the selector's still going to have difficulty because, you know, Alistair Brownie can, has done it when it matters, but sadly his race and his home city of Leeds didn't really go to plan, did it, with a, with a DQ? Well, yeah, exactly. I mean, unfortunately, <laughs> Alistair was DQ'd in the race, if you're wondering where he was, mm. um, and that was due to what was regarded as a dunking in the swim. Um, now, we have got a little quote from Alistair. Um, he says, I'm very embarrassed about being DQ'd. The swim action was completely unintentional and I've had worse done to me in every 
World Series race I've ever done. However, it is a field of play decision and I chose not to protest it. He also goes on to say, I think Great Britain have a great team going to the Olympics and I wish them all the best. Alex Yee's performance today was outstanding and a real breakthrough. He also then goes on to say, I've known my ankle needs surgery for a little while. My focus will be on getting healthy again and then long distance triathlon in yeah. the future. So I think it is kind of him stepping yeah. up now. It kind of sounds like he's made the selector's job quite easy with that and he's mm. gone like, I'm going to step back gracefully. Um, yeah, and say. respectfully, again, almost tipping the hat to Alex mm. and saying, you've earned yeah, this, yeah, yeah. well done. I think um, one I am looking forward to seeing the results of, though, don't envy the selection, is still the, the US women's team. Mm. I mean, Taylor Spivey finished, I think, sixth, but she was the top American. And then Katie Zafaris, I think, was the third American. That's just oh, going to be a tough one, isn't well, it? Also, before we, we move on completely, as we were talking about the Brownleys, Johnny Brownlee has also announced that this... Olympics will be his final Olympics and mm. after that he is going to, he's not retiring thankfully, but he is going to be stepping up to longer distance. Obviously he's dabbled his toe a little bit with um, the Challenge Daytona, the championship race, um, but yeah, we'll be excited yeah, to see so how he gets his, on there. Yeah, so be his third Olympic Games. He's got the bronze, he's got the silver. I was kind <laughs> of expecting at least another one from him. He's still relatively young and yeah. I, I didn't see this coming, yeah. but yeah, I'm sure he's going into this one and he's going to try and leave no stone unturned. Yeah, good Crazy. luck. Well, there's also some exciting racing over in France, the Tri Games official, a half Ironman distance race that doubled up as the French Championships. So the women's race was won by Manon Genet, her strong swim dominating to give her the win by over eight minutes. And then it was Clement Mion beating Sam Laidlow to take the win in the men's race. Brilliant. We also had some racing over in Australia with Ironman Cairns. Um, the women's race, it was Kylie Simpson that took the win around three minutes over Amelia Watkinson, then Chloe Lane taking third. Over in the men's race, another impressive performance from Max Newman, which also bumps him up into fourth place on the International's Collins Cup ranking. And that was ahead of Tim Van Berkel, and then Josh Amberger in third, also all stamping the spot for Kona. Yeah, exciting stuff. And there was another sort of exciting racing over in Lake Garda. It was the Xterra Short Track. And it looks super cool from the photos. They're basically racing around the streets of Lake Garda with some hay bales to give them small jumps. It was super short distance, oh, oh, super short racing. Almost a bit like that Red Bull urban downhill mountain bike. Yeah. It's quite fun. I think it? the crowds were out. I mean, I would love to go and do that race. And the and the lake, I mean, Lake Garda is just beautiful anyway. Mm. But um, the men's race was won by Arthur Ferissier and the women's was won by Loanne de Voisson. <laughs> All right, now to take a look through all your photos and videos. We've got this one from Dave from Newark on Trent. Um, he's had a recent bike fit, including a 45mm um, stacker on his tri bars, but he's also got some custom decals on his yeah. disc wheel, um, which he's had uh, basically laser cut. And I believe that may be the Outlaw logo. It does Correct look like I'm it, wrong. but when it's in the sort of a video, and uh, when the wheel is spinning, it looks super cool. Yeah, really nice. Does. But I also really like his setup. He sent us kind of like a, a hit POV shot almost for when he's training um, and he's got a projector for Zwift basically covering that whole wall, mm. which is pretty cool, isn't it? Yeah, and the treadmill there, he's sorted whatever yeah. the weather throws at him even though now in the UK it's a bit sunnier. Good mm. time to get outside. We've got this lovely picture here from actually the Leeds Triathlon. So it was also open to age group athletes. And this has been sent in by John T and from the World Triathlon Super Sprint. He said he did his first ever Super Sprint as a para athlete. And it's pretty happy. Exhausted, but happy. <laughs> awesome. Um, next one from Tom, and he sent in a pic with his Trek Madon. Um, and he is in the Paps of Jura in the Argyle, which is um, an island in Scotland. I had to Google this. It's yeah. in the Inner Hebrides. Um, and I'm sure Fraser's probably tutting at us right now, <laughs> going, oh my goodness, so why don't you know uh, where that is? But um, yeah, it, it sounds like it's a stunning area, and he's taking a it. shot. Um, and you can see kind of the hills in the, in the distance. It just looks beautiful. Yeah. Another reason to go to Scotland. Oh, it does look like that. But if you if you get that weather, if you're lucky enough, I wonder how many days it took him to get mm, that photo. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> uh, well, thank you ever so much for sending in your photos. Please do keep them coming in. Use the link that's on screen right now. You can find it in the description just down below. All right, it's time for caption competition. Uh, we had this picture from Arza Kina last week and we've got your suggestions. Yeah, this one from Shane Portia said, then 10 seconds later, you'll never guess where someone put their front wheel. I'm not a bike stand. <laughs> it's a bit wrong, that one. <laughs> um, Richard Ard, I've heard of legs turning to jelly out of T2, but this is something else. <laughs> uh, but the winner 
is Barak said, crawling out of bed as close to race time as possible. Yeah, nice one. We'll make sure you get in touch and we will send a GTN cap out to you. And for this week's caption competition picture, we have this from the WTCS race in Leeds at the start of the men's competition. And I think if you look closely, that's Alex Yee, isn't it? Yeah, I'm not entirely sure what he's doing. Um, but it clearly worked, whatever he is doing. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Praying to the gods or something, I don't know. Um, but that's it for the show this week. We hope you guys have enjoyed it. We've got loads coming up on the channel, including a new series, Beginner versus Amateur versus Pro. Heather oh. is taking on a couple of... Yeah, oh, well, I'm taking on a beginner and a pro. I'm somewhere in the middle. Um, quite looking forward to actually seeing that video come out. We're making a bit of a series mm. out of it, so keep your eyes peeled. Yeah, can we divulge who that pro is? I think we can. We've mentioned her name actually in the show, only very subtly. It is Kat Matthews, hot off her second place at Ironman Tulsa. So I've got my work mm. cut out trying to race race Kat, but it's yeah, be good. great um, insight. We also have How to Run Uphill um, coming up, so yes, yeah, thank yeah. you for that. And talking of coming up, what are you up to this weekend? Oh, I am a Jeff. Good to be reminded me. I am doing the Paddy Buckley round as I discussed in the show a couple of weeks ago. So 105k um, over a stupid elevation. Uh, it's almost Everest thing. Um, well, we just come back from Portugal. I've managed to get in a couple That's of runs whilst we're for you. Yeah. Um, <laughs> Uh, but yeah, no feeling okay. I'm really excited. It looks like the weather's quite good, which um, I don't know if that, it's a good thing or a bad thing. I'm yeah. going to end up... You're going to um, need to make sure you don't make the same mistake as um, yeah, Damien, Damien Hall. Hall. We don't yeah. want you. We don't want an angle and photo finish, do we? <laughs> yeah. um, but if you're liking the look of these t-shirts, so at last we've got out summers here and we're quite enjoying getting our arms out mm. in the sunshine. Well, do check out the GTN shop. There's five new colours for you to choose from. And we've got a couple of videos before you go. There's the Picta versus Threlfall. Sam versus Mark Battle is, yeah, well, yeah, it's worth the a dads, watch. And the dads. It is, yeah. And also Long versus Short Tail Helmet. And don't forget, give us a like and hit the globe to subscribe if you haven't yet done so.